So I want to look at a, an example, a specific example, the Ricardian model. Again, the Ricardian model has the assumption of only one type of input, labor, with constant returns to scale, so that if you double the input, you double the output. And I've got, I'm going to have two countries here, so America and Brazil. And we're going to start with these assumptions about the unit labor coefficients uh, for, the, uh, for America. And what that means is the number of workers it takes to produce the two goods, or at least one unit of the good. So in America, it's going to take 10 workers, 10 L, for every unit of X, and 20 units of labor for every Y. And I'm going to assume that there's 100 units of labor in country A, i.e. America. Brazil, similarly, we're going to have two workers for every X, five, uh, one worker for every Y, and they're going to have 10 units. So the first thing we want to do is to graph the production possibility frontiers for the, uh, for the two countries. So we'll put X on this axis, we'll put Y on this axis, and we want to ask how many units of X can be produced if all 100 units of X are devoted to that, to that good. It takes 10 workers for every X. If we use all 100 workers to produce X, then you're going to be able to produce 10 units of X with all of your resources. If you take a look at Y, it takes twice as many workers to produce one unit of Y, 20 rather than 10 for X. So you're going to be able to produce half as many. So it would be a point equal to 5Y. So 5Y can be produced, or 10X can be produced, or anywhere in between. Now, with the constant returns to scale in the Riccardi model, that trade-off is constant. It's a linear production possibility frontier. It's a constant trade-off between, uh, between y and x. And so let's the slope of, of the PPF, actually the absolute value, is equal to the opportunity cost of x in terms of y. So let's take a look here. We, if we produce a unit of X, it's going to take 10 workers. That is, a, that is enough workers to produce only half of a unit of Y, because it takes twice as much Y to produce, or twice as much labor to produce Y. So the opportunity cost of X for America is one half unit of Y for every X because it takes only half as many workers to produce that unit of X. Now if you look here, that is indeed the slope. It's one half, it's the rise over the run. So if we do the same thing for the Brazilians, we're going to get a similar relationship. If we take a look at how much Y the Brazilians can produce with their 10 resources. So X, they'll be able to get five units of X if they devote all ten units to the production of X because it takes two workers for every X. If they devote all their resources to the production of Y, we get ten Y. And once again, we have a linear production possibility frontier. And we have the slope of the PPF for country B, Brazil, you're going to give up the opportunity to produce two units of Y for every X. It takes two workers. It's going to take uh, twice as many workers to produce X as it does Y, so the opportunity cost is twice. Um, or is, uh, is equal to uh, 2y for every x. So, if we take a look at these two graphs, you can also see the uh, these differing opportunity costs in this, 
just by uh, just visually. And here's a here's a, a quick trick. If you take a look at the angle down here by the x-axis, that's going to give you the opportunity cost, at least a visual uh, representation of it. And what you see is when you graph these uh, these two PPFs, that this angle here is relatively steep compared to this one. That means that the opportunity cost of X in country B exceeds that in country Y. Okay, so you can just, once you look at these uh, PPFs, if you draw them properly, you're going to immediately see the, uh, the differences in the opportunity cost. The same way, this angle here is the opportunity cost for Y. It's the opportunity cost of the good near this, near this axis. If you compare this angle with that one, you're going to see that Brazil has the small angle, the lower opportunity cost for Y compared to X. Which brings up a basic result in looking at relative prices and opportunity costs. If country A has the lower opportunity cost of X, that is to say a small angle here, compared to Y, then it's got to be the case that Brazil has the lower opportunity cost for the other product. That is to say Y. So th if you say that this angle is bigger than that one, just by looking at the geometry, that's got to mean that this angle is lower than that. And let's verify this looking at the, uh, the basic numbers. The opportunity cost for Y in country A, okay, how, much, how many units of X do you give up by producing a unit of Y? Well, it's going to take 20 workers to produce a unit of Y. You're going to have to give up the uh, two units of X in order to free up enough workers to produce that unit of Y. So it's 2X for every Y. Now one thing you'll notice is that these two are just the reciprocals of each other. Okay. The opportunity cost for Y is just the flip of the opportunity cost of X. If we look at this from the, the standpoint of Brazil, so again the opportunity cost of Y in country B. If I produce one unit of Y, I need one worker, I would only have to reduce the, uh, the production of X by a half of a unit in order to free up the workers to produce that that unit of Y. Okay, so here's this example of the two PPFs in the Ricardian model. We're, we've used this to show the, uh, that we can figure out the opportunity cost through the underlying numbers or by graphing the, uh, the two uh, PPFs appropriately. Now finally I would say that, you know, let's look at this in terms of the, of the comparative advantage. Since the opportunity cost of X is lower in country A, then the opportunity of cost, opportunity cost of X in country B, then we say that A has the comparative advantage in X. B, on the other hand, has a lower opportunity cost of Y. That is to say it has a comparative advantage in Y compared to uh, country, uh, country A.